The land whispered and then roared, and the roar became the sound of the rapids, and the work became the notion of infinite time as interpreted through the movement of water and its link with our forever. A friend of mine had written a book. She had described her life in Tasmania very eloquently. The minute that I found out that she had written the book, I downloaded it. As soon as I had finished it, I knew that I had to go. So the book was the inspiration for going. I decided that I needed to, to see the place and to be there. And, um, and since I can't be idle, I started to look for something productive to do while I was there. The artist residency requires you to make a piece of work either about the caretaker's cottage, which has been there, I think, since the late 19th century, or a work about Cataract Gorge itself. The land spoke to me, and so I made a work about the land. There's a profound sense of history, or even prehistory about the place, that you almost have to go there to experience it. It's very difficult to describe. It's a sense of something beyond time that almost rises as a, as a palpable force from the land itself and from the rocks from which the gorge is created. Water features heavily in a lot of the work that I've made. It's something that is universal. It's something that we can't claim ownership to, but that's essential to life. It's something that passes from one human being to the next. It operates as a repository of shared secrets. It's the perfect metaphor for what Jung might call the collective unconscious. And so I'm fascinated by it. I, I also think that it's incredibly beautiful. When I arrived, I, I walked the gorge for days. I then started to take my camera out with me and I started to shoot. And I started to be drawn to shooting images of the water. And it was reminiscent to me of some work that I had done on Anasazi land, on sacred land in northern New Mexico, where I was um, taking photographs of a river and then uh, manipulating the photographs to look like deep space. Some of those ideas and themes started reappearing in the work that I was doing in Cataract Gorge, except that I had the benefit of a moving image camera. I went and I, I shot from um, a very low bridge that didn't have any railings across the gorge because it was the only place that I could film from that didn't have safety barriers. And so it was the only place where I could get the shots that I wanted. I took the film and we ran some tests on it to see how it would look slowed down. When I saw it slowed down to the furthest point that we could do, it just, snapped, it completely came alive for me, and I knew that that was the shot. From that point, I, I knew exactly what the work was and, and where it needed to go. I wanted to represent the passage of time through sound. The two channels closest to the doors in the gallery represent the modern world. You can hear 
aircraft overhead, you can hear motorcycles and cars, you can hear people walking across the bridge and on the street. The next set of speakers represents more the sounds of the natural world and away from what might be considered civilization. The third set of channels is intended to represent the Dark Ages, a time when things were more unformed. The final set of speakers is the set of speakers that I think of being beyond time, an audio representation of what it must have been like at a point in time so far away from our current framework that it's almost impossible to imagine. We did take some of the sounds of the birds and detune them to sound like what we imagined animals might have sounded like. The idea is to walk through these sets of speakers, not only a representation of the gorge, but also a timeline for how the gorge might have evolved from prehistory. The remarkable thing about this project is that it's actually a monumental piece of work. It's, it's an enormous job. And, um, and it was from the time that I got the green light from QV Mag um, to the time that we were pretty much ready to go was just under three weeks. And that, that included a lot of uh, shooting time as well. It's three contiguous in nine foot by 16 foot frames. So the screen that it's projected on is nine feet by 48 feet. They flew three projectors from the ceiling and then installed the eight channels of sound. As you can imagine, the sound in um, a space like that is rampant. We modeled the sound through convolution processing. And the files were managed in post-production. It was handled in the United Kingdom while I was in Australia. I worked with the uh, IT department at QV Mag during the day and with our studios here through the night. So um, I don't think anybody got very much sleep. When I arrived in Cataract Gorge, I was very tired. And when I saw the finished work, I realized that my soul was still intact. And that nothing that had happened to me had diminished it or had stripped it away from me. And that is probably the greatest gift that the entire experience has given me and I really hope that when people come to look at the work, they get some sense of the sanctity of that space within themselves. <laughs>